God. And Jesus refers to this one. Forget about countries, nationalities, all kinds of stuff. There's just two. God's kingdom and Satan's. There's some scriptures that are hard to make sense of unless you know that fact. Such as Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes Solomon, who is the wisest man who ever lived. He made a statement of property for a long time. He said, there's no new thing under the sun. Same verse goes to say that that which is, is that which hath been. You see, can't be anything say, see, this is new or that's new. Now, I feel like computers were sort of something new. Now, I mean, I, I, you know, the old computers that came out of the 50s and 60s. Now they had like the size of refrigerators, and they had a whole bank of you know, on the whole wall. And they did less and had less memory than the ones that did now at this time. But I thought that was brand new. Computers are brand new. Jet travel has always been around. It came out shortly after World War II. That I would call that new. Television it came out in the 50s. That revolutionized the whole world. That was new. Color TV came out in 1961. That was new, I thought. And this man says there's nothing new under the heavens. What are you talking about, man? Solomon? This stuff. He said everything that they have in our world that we kind of think is new and modern and technologically advanced, he said it came from that kingdom. And they've been having it. I told you a few times how that Chuck Yeager, the test pilot for the Navy, flew the latest jet up the West Coast. And he was going to like Mach 1. And when he's flying up there, he said five craft flew beside him and slowed down. He's traveling, he's pushing his plane to his limits. He's testing it. Brand new aircraft. He said he pulled him and slowed down. And looked at him. And then he said they made a 90 degree turn. I saw the streak of light. You remember when you watched Star Wars? Mm -hmm. And when he made a blast, you know, and psh, it, it goes. He said, that's exactly what they did. You saw a blur. That's all five of them made a 90 degree turn in the air. Nothing to do that. That's just their character. You know, get a jet, they can turn tight. If the pilot can stand the G force, but you know, they, they still take a little bit of area to turn in. You say, this thing's turning like a car, turning a corner at a stoplight. They turned 90 degrees and we're gone. When he landed, he was shaking. And he said, we're in trouble. He said, this is our best right here, our latest. He says, five craft passed me up in the sky. They slowed down to look at me and then blew up like a blur of light. And they made him the squelch the story. He couldn't, he couldn't talk about it. Then we come up to like 25, 30 years later. We have the new stuff. We've got new computers and all that kind of stuff. His kingdom's had it for a long time. And what he wants to do is take over this world. And that's exactly what he comes to do. And this stuff we're going to read this from the Intergalactic Federation of Planets. It's all like stuff from Star Wars. First time I read it, I knew it wasn't science fiction. I said, this, who wrote this? It's serious. You know, I'm talking about first contact, coming down, so on and so on and so forth. Then the Lord showed me how to the scripture, and it's getting something you could not have figured out by right intellect. And Luke, Things which you behold, the days will come 
in the which there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. You can't read God's word and then reinterpret it. You have to take it at face value. Now, a lot of Bibles, at the top of the page, and here's a synopsis of what, or title of what that page is about, many Bibles say the destruction of the temple. So they said, well, the temple was destroyed. That's not what you said at all. You have the word destruction. There's another word dismantling. He said, not one stone can top another. This temple wasn't destroyed. It was taken apart. As Jesus said, it would be taken apart brick by brick. The first thing you do to read God's word, the first thing I do, always, oh, still doing it. I just ask those questions. How is this going to happen? Why would it happen? When will it happen? And I've talked this many times and said this was a proof prophecy. For the most part, a lot of your prophets in the Bible that are given the Old Testament, they take hundreds of years to come to pass. It's very similar to prophecy is given that comes to pass in the first lifetime. This prophecy here was given in AD 31. It was fulfilled in AD 70. Titus, the Romans came in. And they burnt the city. And they burnt the temple. But remember, it says, verse 5, And as some of them spake of the temple, how it was adorned with goodly stones and gifts. This one of the most decorated buildings in the world. It was inlaid with gold and costly stones. And when they began to burn the temple, Titus having noticed this streaks coming down as the gold began to melt between the bricks. Nobody in the right mind is going to leave the gold. He said, take it apart. Brick by brick and get to scrape the gold off of it. And Jesus' words were, were, were fulfilled literally. And they take it apart. And lay the stones down, they take them apart, there's no gold, they throw them down. As we said here, he said, this number that one stone upon another, this should not be thrown down. They had no use for the bricks once they took the, the gold off, and so they threw them down and broke them so it could be re rebuilt again. Has been rebuilt since then. And they asked him, saying, Master, but which of these things be? Now this brings a whole whole another area. Their question is when? I don't care look at that question. When it requires a date. A lot of people are against what they call date setters in God's word. They understand that God is the ultimate date setter. He does no wrong in his word. He talked about the flood. He said, my spirit's not going to always strive with man. I got, I got an enemy date with man. I'm going to destroy him. But then he goes on and he says that. And he gives a date. Get his date to be 120 years. Read your Bible. The flood began on Noah's birthday. When Noah turned 600, the flood started. So Noah was 480 years old when God first gave the flood message. And he helped that message for 120 years. We're disappointed since 97. <laughs> Imagine being delayed for 120 years. What is God's word? He told Abraham. He said, your seed's going to be as strangers in a strange land. They're going to be slaves, actually, under hard taskmasters. He said, all period of time, years. If you know a date it is uh, that was spoken, then God has given it a date, same date, 430 years later. Okay? That's why it's a big deal in Exodus 12 and 38, I think it is. It says, they came out of Egypt the self-same day. He's saying what? The day they walk into Egypt as slaves, they walk out the same day, 430 years later. 
God says, then God is not worth more spain if he can't keep his word. Right. Period. Why bother? Right. And Satan doesn't have the ability, so therefore he is called a liar mm -hmm. and a deceiver, and he has a, a carrot for the world and has the whole world following his carrot. Wow. And he can't keep a single promise. Mm -hmm. It's all his whole world is built upon a lie. Right. What he's going to do, what he can do, and what he will do. But he never, never, ever, like these guys, he never gives a date. Right. These guys haven't given a date yet. I read articles for 20 years, this is about 20 years, they have not given a date. Not once. And he's saying, soon. Pretty soon. And the councils of heaven. And the decrees of the, we have this ones, and all that kind of garbage. But never given you a date. They got some new ones going on. I, I, I'll bring them out in this article. I don't want to keep it real late. Hey, but this is kind of important, you know? God said, they'll come out in the fourth generation. They'll come out richer than they were when they went in. They went in rich, very rich. Jacob and his 12 sons were smoking in. They could buy that so much money that they could buy food for the whole seven years of famine in Egypt, in the world. Fourth generation. And God kept his word. That's why Pharaoh Satan, he can't make these kind of pronouncements, but he's always standing by in case God's word comes to pass. You got to give him credit more credit than most people hear God's word in that sense. A lot of folks hear God's word just you know, ignore. Satan doesn't, doesn't believe it, but he makes plans that they look real. And so the fourth generation came, he started killing all the boy babies. Why? Because God said a deliverance is going to come in this, in this particular year. And the 430 years almost been expired now. And so a man named Moses was born. And, you know, to make sure that this doesn't come to pass, let's kill all the boy babies. And that way this deliverer can't come. And God put one, God put a number on him. That shows how, how powerful God is. His mother, not wanting to kill the baby, she put Joe, she put Moses in the, in the basket and pushed him on the river now. And had a sister peeking in the bushes to see what happened to him. And it so happened that God floated that basket down to the place where Pharaoh's daughter takes a bath. And she saw it. She was one of the Hebrew boys. She felt sorry for him. And she picked him up and adopted him. Now this deliverer is being brought up in Pharaoh's court, next in line to rule Egypt. The one day he had to make a decision. And he did. He saw his, she saw his, one of the Egyptians beating one of his Hebrew brethren. And he says, if you look this way, that way. You can look all kind of ways, but God says time is not time. That's right. And so he kind of made a premature move. He said not see anybody, so he killed the Egyptian. Next day, he went out there and some of his own folks are fighting against each other. And Moses came to talk to him and said, well, your brother married me. They said, what are you going to do? Kill us like you did the Egyptian? And Moses said, this thing is known. And at the age of 40, he was on the run because the word got back to Pharaoh. And Moses killed, Moses killed one of your soldiers. You know, this must be our, our deliverance, and he's killing one of your soldiers. Well, Moses ran at the age of 40. His whole life changed at that point. And God shows throughout his word that when you follow his word, your life is going to change. Not because of you trying to do good or do things and not do that. God's word is going to make your life change in spite of you. And sometimes you're going to change to a place. You know, you think it's something you did wrong. In Moses' case, Moses thinks like, I'm getting hit to put yourself in his shoes. Here's a man who had a name, had the best of food, the best of clothes, he was wealthy, he had a career, he had a future. He's going to sit on the throne of Egypt one day. And all of a sudden, I mean, think, he put something to his mind trip, what he felt like, all of a sudden running <coughs> in the desert with no future. Instead, he looked over his shoulder. Waiting for Pharaoh's soldiers to come and kill him. Then God gave him a job. He ran into a job, you might say. He was not looking for a job. He was going to get some water. And when they were coming to, to water the city, the, the men, you know, they, they kind of both are the women that's watering well. And Moses stood up for him. And he made sure the women got their, their cattle water. And out of that, he got a wife. He wasn't for a wife either. 
But he got a wife. The Bible says a man obtains a wife, he has obtained favor from the Lord, and has found a good thing. And God gave him one. And then his father-in-law was a shepherd. He owned sheep. So Moses started and got a job tending sheep. He did that job for 40 years. You gotta wonder again, what went through his mind for 40 years when he knew what his future was going to be? He made this mistake, and now I ruin my own life. You can't ruin your life with God if you're in God's hands. You can't do anything to yourself if you're in God's hands. It may look like things are all going all wrong, but you're in his hands. He runs your whole life. Every detail of it. You can't do anything wrong in his sight because he got the wrong factor in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You understand that? Yeah. He's got some failures factored in. He's got some mistakes factored in. He's got some murder factored in. He has our work out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When they stole Joseph, they stole this man. His brothers. His life was over. He gets down to Israelites and taken out of Egypt. And a man named Potiphar, who's like a captain of the army in Pharaoh's government. And Potiphar buys him. It makes him a houseboy, you might say. This says that whatever Joseph did, God blessed him. Just like pray for you guys said, I pray that you have a favor on your job. That God gives you favor in certain situations. And God does that. Not because of who you are, but because of the favor, God just shows your way. You know, you're, you're, you're have, have a job and you wonder why, you know, things are going so well. I'm getting early raises. I got a job when I was on AT&T fell apart, I thought my life was over. That's the best job I ever had. All of a sudden, it's not there anymore, you know? And I got a job at a rinky-dink college teaching up telecommunication. And the pay was not even near what it should have been. And God gave me favor with the, with, with the director of telecommunications. And after the first month, I mean, some, some things that God does are just unbelievable. They gave me a four dollar a four dollar raise after the first month. Yeah. Then the next month, the second month, they gave me another four dollar raise. I was making more. I was making eighteen t or something. I said God can just do anything. I haven't sold God short since then. He runs the show. You know, some things happen in life before I got life fall apart. You know, sometimes God has to make your life fall apart to put it together. That's right. and, and that's what He does. You know, He said the building, the, the temple to be destroyed. Or God to build a new one that's going to come along when Jesus walks in. But it had to be destroyed. Well, he says date. They said, what should these things be? Now, here's, uh, here's where I want to be. He said, take heed. If you're not deceived, what does that tell you? It tells you this. You watch movies. Special effects are going to dominate the age you're living in. Special effects aren't putting the movies to entertain you at the movies. Special effects are things Satan's trying to make the whole world change. Mm -hmm. Hear me? Yeah. These chemtrails. You get them nice and clear day, and all of a sudden you see these planes flying them. Leave behind what's called the, uh, jet vapor. It's not jet vapor at all. Jet vapor just goes away. A few minutes. This stuff stays in the sky. If you watch it, it went on for years for the public to be aware of it. It was never on the news, it was never on the weather, never. They were talking about it. But these clouds begin to spread out. And before you know it, in about two or three hours, the day is cloudy. He's doing a great, he, he's preparing a special effects for the whole world. And he's got to do that. And part of his, part of his, God just told me this last week, I tell you. Part of this scenario is that for what he's doing up in the sky, he's got to cover the sky so you can't see it. And that's the reason it's being done all over the world. He's going for a very big illusion. So Jesus says, take heed that no man deceive you. He's giving you a clue saying there's going to be a massive deception in the last days, and nothing's going to be what it appears to be. Nothing's going to be, nothing's going to be what you think it is. Okay? We're going to be lying to you right and left. We're going to be lying to you by the government, by your president. By the news media, they're gonna lie, lie, lie all the time, and make you believe it. That's their job. Okay? I'm, I'm, I'm looking back, I'm, I'm looking at that, that marathon bombing in Boston, the whole way. You can have that bombing, they closed down for the first time ever in our history, they closed the city. They closed it. Now that's a bit drastic. 
to find 